Even. So today I'm going to talk about selecting and doing with tidy evil. And the goal will be to create uh, a function around uh, tidyverse pipelines and to show you the easy way to do that. Uh, Jenny showed a bit of it. It's uh, passing the dots through uh, tidyverse functions. And we'll focus on two flavors of tidy evil, uh, selecting and doing. So to come back on the reason why we have tidy evil, to put it, to put it in, a, in more context, uh, the goal is really to change the, the context of computation. So for example, if we have this filter function uh, where you pass a data frame and filtering expressions, uh, we want to take these expressions and uh, evaluate them in the context of the data frame. So you, you have the equivalent uh, base R code on the, the right side where you have to be specific about where the, the columns come from. And it even goes further because we can change the context of computation to uh, like foreign databases and we can uh, translate the, uh, your filtering expressions to a SQL query. So we need to ideal for that because if we use uh, normal functions, you would get this object not found error because uh, R does not know about a height object. And that's why we really need to uh, delay the computation of these expressions. We need to, we need to prevent uh, the, evalu the evolution from happening. And so that's what we mean by quoting. Quoting means that we delay the computation and then we change the context and we resume the, the computation. And so quoting code is a bit like a blueprint for the computation. Uh, it tells R what, what to do to get a result. And the problem when we have quoted code like this is that now when you program uh, against functions that work on blueprints, you need to modify the blueprint. And that's why we have bang bang, which is like a surgery operator for the for blueprints. So uh, we'll talk about the two flavors of tidy evaluation that we have in the tidyverse. And here we have uh, four uh, functions from dplyr: mutate, group by, select, and filter. And they look a bit the same. You use it in the same way, but there's actually one that's different from the other. It's select because select takes a selection. All the other functions takes, uh, take actions. What we mean by action is that, uh, so we get this blueprint and we use it to create new vectors. And then we modify the, the data frame. Whereas with uh, selections, uh, something different happens. Uh, we match the, the columns to their position in the data frames and then uh, we, we reorganize the, the data frame. And there is no creation of vectors there. And so in actions, uh, uh, when we get the blueprint, we, that's pretty much normal R code. Uh, R code. But in selections, we have a, a few special features there. So f to start with, uh, the C function and the minus and colon operators, uh, they understand positions and column names. And that's how you can uh, really easily specify a range of colon, for example, with the colon operator. And then you can also use uh, selection helpers, uh, which are very useful because they know about the variables that you are currently work is, working with. And so, for example, you can select all the columns that end with a suffix, or you can match against the regexp. And uh, that's very useful when you have well-organized data frames with consistent column names with suffixes and prefixes. It makes it really easy to select columns. Sometimes uh, the action verbs and selection verbs appear to work uh, the same way. So here we have select height and we have transmute height. And we get exactly the same result. But it's useful to know whether you have an action verb or a a selection verb regardless, because if you change the input a bit, uh, here I'm, now I'm uh, supplying one. And for a selection verb, it means, since it understands column positions, it means select the first column. Whereas for an action verb, it will create a new vector uh, from your input, and in this case, recycle it to the uh, data frame size, and we get a column of ones. 
So what about goodbye? Uh, that's, that's an interesting case because most users uh, think it's like selection verb. But actually, it's an action verb. And if you try to uh, pass a, a selection helper to group by, you will get this error that the variables cannot, uh, are not found. And we've made it uh, an action verb because it's actually very helpful to create these new these new vectors on the fly where you discriminate between groups. And so in this example here, uh, I'm grouping by uh, the, the, the observations whose height are above a certain threshold, and then I'm summarizing on the fly, and I get the, the nice table of summaries. So what can you do if you have uh, an action verb like uh, group by and you want to really pass a selection? Well, you can use the at variance, the scoped verb. And uh, with this, so we have like muted at, uh, summarize at, and group by at, and a bunch of others. And they take a selection inside this little function vars, which is, uh, which is a function that uh, does the quoting, that gets the blueprint, and then passes it to group by at. And within this, you can pass a selection. And uh, here in this example, we are grouping by all the columns that ends with color. So let's see how we can uh, create ID eval functions. And there are three challenges here. Uh, first, uh, there is the need to, uh, to quote the inputs to get selections and actions from the users. Uh, then there is the need to modify these selections or actions, and then pass them uh, around to other ID eval functions. So the second one is uh, uh, it's more complex than the other. That's where you need to understand all the tidy eval theory. You need to use the tidy eval tool like bang bang. And we are not going to talk about this. Today we are going to uh, focus on the first and third challenges. And to do that, we are going to pass the dot. So here we have the simplest function you can uh, create by passing the dots. We typically take a data frame, and then we take dots, and we pass it, we pass it through to uh, another tidy eval function. And that means that all the arguments that the user supplies through the dots, uh, now it's the responsibility of our functions in the player or tidier or the other tidy eval grammars to do the quoting and uh, to uh, create actions or selections. So you don't have to do anything, and you solve both uh, challenges one and three uh, in the same go. So it's a bit limited, uh, but it can be very useful, and we are going to see three examples of it. So first, we are going to create a selection verb uh, with the player. Then uh, we are going to see how we can uh, transform that selection verb to an action verb instead. And then we are going to use tidier to uh, complexify the, the pipeline. So as I mentioned, uh, most deployer verbs have variant suffix with at. And uh, they take selections, so they can be very useful to see if you want to create a selection verb with ID, uh, by passing the dots. And um, two of these are a bit different to the others because they, uh, they take a selection, but they also take a function. And then they apply the function to each column that's part of the selection. So it's a bit like L apply or the function map in pair. And it works like this. You uh, pass the data frame, you pass a selection inside VARS, and then a function that can also be a per uh, lambda, so with the formula notation. And uh, it applies the body of the function on each uh, column the, from the selection, and that's as if you had created this much longer uh, summarized call. So it can take a function, a single function, but it can also take a list of functions. Uh, so here I'm creating a list uh, with a function that takes the average and then, and then the, the standard deviation. And when you pass a list of functions, it applies each of those to each column in turn and spreads the results across the columns. So our first uh, tidy eval function will be called summarize cells for selections. And we are wrapping around uh, summarize at. We pass the dots to VAS, we pass the list of summary functions to it, and then you can use it by passing uh, selections, and you get uh, the, the table of summaries. Uh, 
And the nice thing about it is that it works with groups. So it's always a good idea to think about what happens when you uh, pass a group table uh, to uh, your tidy eval function if you are using deployer verbs. And in this case, it will create the summaries for uh, each, uh, each group. So what if we wanted to supply actions instead of selections? And when you want to create uh, an action verb, uh, one very useful function to pass the dots with, uh, to uh, is transmute, because that's like the fundamental action verb in deployer. Because it takes actions, it creates vectors from these actions, and uh, it returns you the, the table uh, that contains these vectors. So on top, you have the previous implementation of summarize cells, and now we have the, uh, the new function summarize acts, and we just pass the dots to transmute, and then instead of using summarize at, we use summarize all, uh, which uh, will apply the summary functions on all the columns of the table that it's, is passed. And that gets you uh, an action uh, function that uses tidyval. And you can uh, create new vectors uh, in the input, so it works like in mutate or table. And here I'm trying to compute a BMI, but I don't have height uh, properly scaled. And so I can pass f a first action that creates a height uh, in meters, and then I can uh, compute the BMI with, the, with this. And it creates the summaries for uh, both vectors. And it works again with, uh, with groups. So the, this table uh, with the results spread across a colon um, is, uh, is not so tidy. So what if we wanted to gather it, uh, to gather them across the, the rows? So that's obviously a job for tidier. And we are going to add a, a gather step to our pipeline. And we'll see that uh, handling the groups will be a bit trickier in this case. So that's how it looks. We still pass the dots to transmute, but now we gather all the columns uh, created with transmute with uh, tidier, uh, the tidier function gather. We group by the variable and we summarize, we apply the summary functions on the column value. And that gets you uh, the, a much nicer table. The problem is that here it doesn't work with a group tuple, so that's why it's always a good idea when you create a new function to see what happens when you pass a, a group data frame. And the reason is that uh, gather, uh, also gather the grouping variables and you cannot apply the summaries on these grouping variables without getting these errors. So the way to fixing is really simple. We gather everything except the grouping variables. And now it works and we get this nice table of summaries. So to sum up, uh, passing the dots is like maybe the simplest way to create a tidy eval function. Uh, it's a good, uh, when, you, when you create one, uh, well, it's, a good, it's good to think about whether you need a, a, an action verb or selection verb, and then you can use the at variants if you need selections, or you can use transmute if you need actions, or any other tidy eval functions. Uh, if you pass the dots to it, and uh, that's a function that takes selections, then it means that your uh, wrapper will take selections as well. So it requires knowledge of tidy eval verbs, uh, so you can uh, create the appropriate pipeline, but that's uh, knowledge that you are already familiar with, and if you learn new things, then it's transferable to your day-to-day uh, -day workflow. And then, uh, finally, it's always a good idea to think about group tables because it gets you uh, uh, like useful results when, uh, when you need to compute things by groups. So my slides are, are, are on speaker deck, and uh, thank you. We have time for several questions, so uh, raise your hand and we'll throw something at you. I think there's one in the back, maybe. <laughs> 
Hello? Okay. Um, I have a question about the slide where you um, summarize by rows. Um, this one? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Um, so where in that function is it doing it by rows? Oh, uh, it's because you gather uh, all the new uh, vectors that you create with the, the inputs from the user, and then we group by the variables. Oh, okay. Right, and then the summaries uh, from summarize at will apply for each group okay. of the variables that were created in the dots. So that's the trick. Okay. 